Mario. He's the one video game icon that, whether you like him or hate him, has affected your video game life at least somewhat. Being one of the oldest gaming mascots of all time, Mario has been through many different iterations during the course of his career, taking his baby steps in 1985, riding on the backs of dinosaurs in 1990, and jumping to the 3D plane in 1996. For me personally, Mario wahooed into my life in the year 2006 with Super Mario Bros. for the DS, but I never fully played it because I wasn't any good. Mario then started to become a more frequent thing with the addition of Mario Kart and Mario Party both on the DS, but while I was at a house with a couple of people, I saw the children playing a new game. I saw Mario, a character I was familiar with, being woken up by a star person and I just watched in awe as the kid controlling Mario made him run, jump, and was having a tough time trying to catch some bunnies. All of this happening on a circular planet. I wanted to see more, but I eventually had to leave the house and for the next few years, I never saw that game again. But it always stuck with me, like a really good dream that I vividly remember. What was that game? What was it called? Fast forward to around 2009, and I left my old neighborhood and now lived in a much bigger house with an attic in which we kept the Wii. We didn't have many games for it yet, so a family friend let us borrow a few of their games. I started looking through the small gallery they gave us, saw one Mario game that looked kinda cool, slipped into the Wii and began playing. And then it happened. After playing through the opening, I saw the scene again. Mario, being woken up by a star person, which I now know is called Aluma. This was it. This was the game that was in the back of my mind all those years ago. Super Mario Galaxy. A game that would kick off my love for the platforming genre, and a game that would spark my interest into the world of video games. I played this game as if I was running a marathon, only stopping to take breaks for food and sleep. It took me about a month to get all the stars needed to beat the story, and I was ready. I put blood, sweat, and tears into getting to the end of this game. I was gonna keep that giant turtle in his ugly f- Then the game's coding fucked up and I couldn't get to the final boss. That was the first time in my life that I felt truly and utterly betrayed. I felt like that entire month of my slow, wonderful, but brutal journey added up to absolutely nothing. In a nutshell, Mario Galaxy made me experience the true power of blue balls. But then after another month or so, I got my parents to buy me another copy and I made it my mission to beat this game. I was not going to let this game beat me. I wasn't going to go out like a little bitch. So my second playthrough began. Thanks to my previous experience, what took me a whole month to get to the final act only took me four days. I played and played early in the morning and late into the night. It was getting easier. I was getting better. This was it. Then the final act that was robbed from me prior finally commenced. My heart pounded as I fought the road to Bowser. I still remember that first shot before the final fight and me screaming, let's do this in my head. I was going to win. And I did. After all that time, I completed the game. And words cannot possibly describe my feeling of completion when I watch the end credits roll, hearing Mario's thank you at the very end. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Manga Rider and this video will pretty much be me trying to explain why this game is such a treasure to me. And if you're looking for the more objective style content I usually do, there's not going to be much of that here. I'm not going to be addressing any flaws of the game because I mainly want this video to be more of a praise rather than a critical analysis. With that out of the way, sit back and allow me to tell you why I fanboy over Super Mario Galaxy. Anybody who's ever played a Mario game knows how the story goes. It's a tale as old as time, but for some reason, most Mario stories don't feel stale. The reason for that, in my opinion, is that the games will always do something that's drastically different to spice up the story, be it related to the narrative or a new mechanic that makes the game more interesting. For example, Super Mario Bros. 3 had tons of new power-ups and unique level designs. Super Mario World lets you play with Yoshi. 
Super Mario Legends of the Seven Stars was an RPG and had a different villain. Super Mario 64 was the first game to play in 3D. Super Mario Sunshine let you play with Flood and you were accused of being a criminal. And Galaxy does the exact same thing. It takes the basic story we all know and turns it into a tale with greater intensity and more scope than you could even imagine. Rather than starting the story with Mario going to save Peach, the game introduces us to the Star Festival, where a comet would pass by the Earth every 100 years, adding some nice lore to the Mario games. Bowser, instead of kidnapping Peach and fucking off, burns the village to the ground and just takes the whole castle straight into outer space. Which now that I think about it is a lot like how Paper Mario opened up. Cool stuff. Mario, instead of getting to space to save Peach, was already next to the castle and was shot into the Great Unknown. Rather than traveling around the country to save Peach, you're on this galactic quest by traveling to different solar systems, each one always increasing in difficulty. Galaxy, I think, was way more focused on making you remember the build-up to your quest rather than getting you to your destination ASAP. And that's what made playing it great. There were times when I completely forgot that I was going through all this trouble just to save Peach because of just how fun the journey was. If anything, I wasn't even focused on getting to Peach. I was more focused on getting the backstory to this character. Enter Rosalina, a brand new character that controls your hub world and is the mother to the Lumas. She was a character that, from the very first line she spoke, I instantly wanted to know more about. Who is she? Where did she come from? Why do all the Lumas love her so much? Galaxy knew about my questions and gave me what is possibly the best way to learn her past, a rewarding episodic story. In Galaxy, there's two continuous stories going on. One, your quest to save Peach, and two, getting more chapters to the storybook. The storybook tells the tale of a young girl who helps a Luma in trying to find its mom and she ends up going on an adventure to outer space where her life changes forever. And judging by how the girl looks, spoiler alert, this story is Rosalina's backstory. And just... Damn, never did I expect to almost cry playing a game as happy-go-lucky as Mario. Everything about this storybook was perfect. The pacing makes you want to read more. The drawings are beautifully simple but have so much life in them, drawn as if they're a dream. The music has a lullaby charm to it and the melody is gut-wrenchingly sad. And the themes of hope, loss, anger, sadness, and joy all at the same time and just- Oh, we didn't deserve something that's good! But a grander and more compelling story with a new interesting character doesn't make a good game though. A game also needs solid and fun gameplay. Does Galaxy deliver on that front? In my opinion, absolutely. Galaxy was a step in a direction that I didn't even know I wanted until I played it. That step being having the levels have more than one area to walk on and have many courses of the levels just be spheres that you can walk around freely. This sounded like something that would never work, but Galaxy was able to not only accomplish it, but also make it fun. With this new mechanic though, it also sounded like dying from falling off a ledge is now no longer possible, which is a main staple when it comes to Mario. But trust me, the fear of falling off a ledge is still there, and it's just as terrifying. One thing Galaxy does is make the gravity mechanic limited, making you sometimes question if you have a chance of staying on, like in Space Junk or Gusty Garden Galaxy. This constant fear of not knowing what is safe and what isn't in some levels always kept me on my toes, adding to my investment to the game. Galaxy's gravity mechanic also opens up way more possibilities for exploration, and the game likes to reward you if you ever want to stray away from the written path, like hidden treasures and even hidden power stars. Mario Galaxy not only upgraded its level design, but it also added more abilities for the player to use, like the addition of star bits, which you collect by either running into them or by pointing the Wii remote at the screen, which, side note, is a great use of motion controls, and these can be used for gathering lives, feeding hungry lumas which will lead to either levels or items, or using them as a motherfucking weapon that can stun enemies and stop certain projectiles. 50% of my fun was just seeing how much I could fuck with enemies by using these things. But what is easily the best addition to the game was the spin attack. Once you get used to this ability, you will abuse it whenever you get the chance. Not only is it used to destroy ice and stunning enemies, but the spin can also increase your jump height and can be used to solve simple puzzles. The spin adds far more variety to the platforming and it's very satisfying to pull off. And like the games prior, Mario was very easy and very fun to control. Every move is very quick and responsive, his speed is perfect, his jump is spot on, and his abilities like the long jump, triple jump, and the wall kick are far more fun to play with. Mario overall received a massive upgrade from his previous titles, gaining one new move and also getting rid of one that wasn't needed like the dive from 64 and Sunshine. Super Mario Galaxy so far is doing great in both the gameplay and the story, but how do the visuals hold up? After all, it has been 12 years since its release. In my opinion, Galaxy has undergone the lovely treatment of aging like fine wine. I think the game, to this day, still looks fantastic. If I could describe Galaxy's presentation in one word, it would be... atmospheric. 
The game did a splendid job of making you feel like you're just a tiny speck in this massive world this game has to offer, with almost every level being extremely large in scale and has that element of exciting danger this game just radiates. Galaxy also has very creative levels that all give off a certain tone depending on the setting. Good at Galaxy gives off happy mystery, while Freeze Frame Galaxy does great at combining both Ice Cold Wonder and Red Hot Adventure. And all of this was greatly enhanced with what I think is Mario's best sound design ever. Every sound effect sounds amazing. Every launch star shot, every star bit collected, every stomp on an enemy, every enemy sound works absolute wonders at getting you sucked into each level. But this game wouldn't be so memorable if it wasn't for the choice of getting an orchestra to do most of the soundtrack. The music. Holy fuck. The music. Almost every human emotion is present in this soundtrack. Good Egg and Gusty Garden Galaxy have a happy tone, Space Junk and Rosalina's backstory have depressing but beautiful melodies, Beach Bowl and Honeycomb Galaxy have a laid back and chirpy melody to them, Melty Molten Galaxy has the intensity you would expect from a level that's literally a ball of fire, and Bowser's battle theme is the musical embodiment of holy shit. But none of these even come close to the tracks you hear during the final battle. And the final battle is the main reason why I put Galaxy on such a high pedestal. Why is that? Well, allow me to break it down. Your time is finally here. You've collected the 60th star you needed and get back to the hub world from your mission. Rosalina instantly praises you and the counter finally slides to zero. You are given a choice. Go or stay. While all this is happening, this track can be heard. This track has one job and one job only, to hype you up. You click yes, and everything goes silent. You see Rosalina cast a spell that quietly winds its way up to the top of the hub world. And then... Sound comes back and it's getting louder and louder, until it all happens with one big bang as the music's beat finally kicks in. Your hub world is hurtling through space, decimating everything in its path. Rosalina starts encouraging you to go forth, and a cosmic bridge forms under Mario's feet as you head your way to the castle. The first few seconds open up with a track that screams, Go get him! The track slowly builds up in intensity as you slowly but surely get closer and closer to Bowser. The level is fantastic at putting all your skills to the test, with gravitational pulls, blocks appearing and disappearing, moving platforms, bullet bills, until you finally hit that launch star and land right at the end of the last stretch. The music transitioning to silence. <laughs> Bowser Jr. appears before you and his theme starts playing, and you see him taunting you, as Peach watches helplessly. The track stops when you see Peach for the second time in the entire game, and the original track comes back zooming in on Mario, hyping you up for the final battle. As you make your way to Bowser, Jr. starts firing meteors at you, the game pretty much telling you, no time to breathe boy, keep going! Once you make it, the familiar drums from the previous Bowser fights come back, and you're just staring Bowser down with only one thought going through your head. I'm going to win. The battle theme returns and you are ready. The game has been pumping you up for so long and it's now time to finally release all that adrenaline into this last fight. Bowser starts attacking you with moves you've never seen before, but you still persevere. You're kicking his ass. You think you just won. The game is silent. And then... The game tells you it's not over yet. You still have one more round to go and the music just screams in your ears. It keeps building up and up as the last struggle commences. Bowser is hitting you with new attack after new attack. The choir is getting more intense. The instruments are getting louder. The energy in your veins flowing through you at a million miles an hour. This is it. The music keeps telling you to keep going. Just run! No! Hit! And the music just stops. Bowser's defeated roar ringing in your ears. And once Bowser falls into the lava, the Grand Star erupts from underneath and plays, in my opinion, the greatest victory soundtrack ever.
Mario then shoots off into the sky, and in a last-ditch effort, Bowser Jr. yeets Peach off his ship into phage. Mario catches Peach, and the music from Goda Galaxy plays in a victorious hurrah as you land. Bowser's planet starts crumbling apart, and Bowser, defeated, looks hopelessly at the destruction all around him, letting out a final annoyed roar. And in one massive explosion, Bowser's planet is no more. But the ending isn't over yet. The force from the blast creates a black hole, and we see Peach's castle ram into the Comet Observatory. Destruction left and right. What was originally a victory now seems like brutal defeat. All hope seemed lost. And in one last ditch effort, the Lumas and the one that has been with you since the start sacrifice themselves and hurtle into the hole, when suddenly... After a universal explosion, you hear the cries of baby Lumas, and the massive figure of Rosalina talks to you one last time about the circle of a star's life. But before she finishes, she leaves you with a cliffhanger, and disappears back into the light, while the screen fades to a blinding white. Mario wakes up and sees a new world, the Mushroom Kingdom, but this time with all the creatures you've met on your journey. And after one final line from Rosalina, Mario gets up, looks up to the sky, and victoriously shouts, Welcome! Welcome, New Galaxy! And the credits begin to roll, playing a fantastic ending song. Super Mario Galaxy was a fucking adventure. Every star, every level, every bump in the road felt worth it in the end, giving me an adventure that blew my childhood mind to pieces. I never knew that Mario was able to make me feel happy while also making me feel sad at the same time, and I will never not appreciate that. It was an absolutely phenomenal game, and it's on a lot of people's top 5 Mario games for a reason. Super Mario Odyssey may still be my favorite Mario game to this day for reasons I mentioned in my Things I Love video, which you can watch later, but Galaxy? Definitely a very close second. My name is Manga Rider, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>